What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is going to be Ladies Night Season 1, Episode 6. So, look. <clears throat> this episode totally, not totally, but this episode really had me flip on some things that I've been saying up until this point. So, y'all bear with me. You know, the great thing about life is when you get more information, you can make a better, a better, a better decision or have a better opinion about things. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about, because the bulk of this is going to be the salt and pepper piece. So let me get go ahead and talk about SWV and get that out the way. So we open up the episode with SW, with Taj working on the song that they want um, to do with salt and pepper, which I think is a great idea. And I still think it's a great idea. Although, and listening to Taj's conversation, and I like Taj, shout out to Taj. Thank you so much. I don't know if she looks at the, the, at the reviews, but she'd be re retweeting my reviews. So thank you. I appreciate it. But listening to Taj talk, about creating this song for salt and pepper is giving me a little bit of insight in where coco was coming from all along now i still feel like coco's opinion i still feel like her opinion of where salt and pepper is excuse me versus swv is not let me say this. Coco should feel the way she feels. That is her group. She should always feel like her group is the best group in the world. So I'm not taking anything away from that. And I'm not judging that at all. But I'm listening to Taj talk. And she was like, you know, I just really want, you know, I really want to get on this. Because we just got to prove to Salt and Pepper that this is this. And I want to prove to them. And I want their worthy. and what that. No. No. Like, I get where she's coming from to say I really want them to do this song. But you know what? They need to feel worthy of you. And and I understand that that's kind of where Coco's been coming from sort of all along. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we see them writing a the song. They actually um, went into the studio and started, you know, trying to put some music. They, they contacted a producer. And the song sounds like it's going to be a nice little woman's anthem, you know, pretty good little woman's anthem. I wish it had worked out. Excuse me, y'all. Golly. Let me tell y'all something. I promise y'all I'm fine until I start doing the videos. Then all of a sudden I start yawning. I've been asleep. I came home from work and took a nap. So I'm not tired. I don't know why I'm yawning. Anyway. So, um, what else? Later on in the episode, SWV and Salt and Pepper hanging out. And mind you, they got all these problems with their residency. They got all these issues going on. But Pep told myself, we need to go to the Cayman. If you don't sit your Cayman ass down and finish this residency and finish figuring out that the, when the engineer know when to hit the button to transition to y'all song, so y'all not out there on stage looking crazy, don't be the Caymans ain't going nowhere. Y'all better get that residency together. And I mean, again, I'm talking as if I don't know what's going on with the residency. Okay, I'm talking in real time, so I know y'all gonna put it in the comments about what's going on with the residency. And I got that. I got it. Um. So that was pretty much what we saw with um, SWV this episode. Something else I feel like. Oh, no, no, no. So SWV got a phone call from their tour manager. Their role manager, tour manager. And he said that Tony Braxton. Oh, my God. Tony Braxton is interested in adding SWV to her long as I live tour to open up for her. Coco was all... Like 100% Coco was like, first of all, Tony Braxton, that's my girl. I love her. I think she's an icon. I'm a fan. I respect whatever she does. And I really feel like that's more of SWV's judge. I think that's more of where we are lane is, you know, we're going to be on tour with our own set. We ain't got to sing back up. We don't have to do nobody else's dance steps. Like this is, this is a better fit for us. Coco, I mean, Lily and Taj are kind of like, well... It's a great opportunity, but maybe we need to see what's going to happen with, with Salt and Pepper first. Like, the spot dates have been going really well. Let's see if they're going to add us full time to the tour. Coco was like, and let me tell y'all something. I'm with Coco on this one. Burn the hand beats two in the bush. You have a firm offer from, a, a again, a brand that's going to bring in um, seats. The one thing I love about Tony Braxton and the one thing I have respected about what Tony Braxton has done with her career. Same thing that um 
boys to men did, and a lot of groups have done, but I'm just talking about people that I know off the top of my head. When your music career adjusts, you adjust with it. And Toni Braxton has adjusted with her music career. She she not going to pack out stadiums, right? But she finds venues that she can sell out. She goes on tours. Because of her lupus, her tours are spaced out. I mean, her dates are spaced out. She doesn't overexert herself trying to do 50 shows and 52 nights because she knows that her body can't handle it. Her crowd is an R&B crowd. These are people who they they want to... If I go to a Tony Braxton concert, I want to hear as long as I live just as much as I want to hear um, he wasn't man enough for me because I'm a fan of her music. I really feel like that's SWV's lane. And I, I really feel like a bird in the hand beats two in the bush. If you have this firm offer from SW, I mean, from Tony Braxton, the tour is already set. The dates are already set. Y'all already know what y'all need to do. Y'all know how to do y'all set. And y'all got y'all wardrobe and everything is straight. I feel like that's the direction y'all need to go. Versus a maybe, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I don't know how we feel. We got to do our residency. Maybe we'll do these dates. Hell no. Especially when you start talking about money. And you start talking about money and making sure that the money is right. You don't even know if y'all going to have a tour. So I'm with Coco on that one 100%. Y'all know Coco been getting on my nerves the majority of this uh, season. But on this one, Coco, I'm with you, boo. If y'all get on that damn phone and tell Salt and Pepper, we will do the two dates we've already... um that we've already um, committed to. But thank you for the opportunity. And maybe when you guys are done with your residency, maybe we can come back to the table. But for right now, we feel like y'all need to focus on the residency. We're going to focus on um, this offer we have. It's better. It's more conducive to where we are right now. You know, Coco can fly back and forth and handle her personal business. Taj is, has a family that she, you know what I mean? It's just more conducive to what everybody is doing at that moment. That's how I feel. Now, that's the SWV side of this. Let's get to the salt and pepper side of this because this is the part. Again, I flipped a little bit. And I ain't flipped all the way because I still feel like Coco was tripping in the beginning. But I mean, on this part, I'm with Coco. Now, I done flipped a little bit on this whole situation too. Let's start from the beginning and work our way forward. So... There was a production meeting with Spin, Jimmy, D Wiz, and um, Salt. Shit, how I forget that? Pepper wasn't there. I should have just said everybody said with Pepper. Anyway, Pepper wasn't there. Now let me say this: D Wiz was D Wiz wasn't D Wiz kid and plays DJ. I'm almost certain. I could be wrong. Y'all correct me. I'm sure y'all will. But wasn't that D Wiz that was um kid and plays DJ? And I guess I could have Googled it my damn self before I started doing my video. But anyway, I didn't think about it so now. So they're sitting there and they're having this production meeting. And Spin is being very, very combative, in my opinion. Um, and D, I mean, even to the point where D-Wiz is like, I feel like you're mad at me. Why are you mad at me? Like, what's really going on? So then they start having a conversation about what happened in the past, right? And I'm sure this was done for the purpose of the show. because. It was so out of left field to even have this conversation. But here's where I started turning a little bit on Spin. Because Spin, I had your back, boo. I had you. But D. Wiz said, when Salt and Pepper called me, and I said Pepper, Pepper called me to offer me this position when you were no longer with the group, I called you first. And I said to you, before I accept this offer, I want to let you know they called me. I want to let you know that they offered me the position. I'm coming to you on the strength of our friendship, on the strength of, of, of our sister brotherhood, on the strength of DJ, whatever, whatever, brotherhood. What's good? He was like, didn't I call you? Yeah, you called me. But see, in that, in that moment is when I sort of flip. See, what I can't stand, and I've been guilty of it, so let me be clear, but what I can't stand is somebody who don't mean what they say and say what they mean. If I call you and I'm asking you your opinion about something, don't come back later and be mad because you didn't tell me the truth. If I call you and say, look, I was offered this, this job and I know it's a job you applied for, what's good? Because here's the thing, 
if I'm going to take the job anyway, I'm not going to give you that courtesy. I'm not going to call you and ask you if you're my friend to say, look, I know you I know you really wanted this position, but they offered it to me instead of you. I'm coming to you as a friend. I'm coming to you on the strength of our friendship. I don't want no problems. I really want to take the job. But if it's going to fuck up our friendship, I'll make a different decision. Because again, if I'm going to take the job regardless, I'm not going to call you. I'm going to tell you on the back end. You understand what I'm saying? And that's not sneaky. It's just, ain't don't need me calling you on the front end. If I'm not going to change my mind, I'm going to do what I do. So if he called you and he said that, he said, that's why I called you. You didn't tell me you felt some kind of way. You didn't tell me not to take the job. So you can't come back 10 years later and now you got a problem with it. Talking about something, it, you were disloyal. No, no, no. I was loyal because I called you. So Ben start, I started feeling some kind of way. I was like, mm, okay, I'm starting to get a little different vibe on this right now. So then we're talking about the situation with the talk, right? TV show The Talk. I always get the talk and that other show on um that Tamar used to be on. I always get those two shows mixed up because I'm a view kind of girl. So, but the talk is the one with Eve that comes on um CBS. Um, with uh Sharon Osbourne or whatever. So here's the thing. They wanted Salt and Pepper to do the show, but they only wanted Salt and Pepper. They did not want Spinderella, right? Spin was like, okay, well, I feel some kind of way. And, you know, if Spin can't talk, Spin ain't going to be there. Spin ain't going to talk. Now, Jimmy was able to negotiate, at least it's the way it played out on the show. Jimmy was able to negotiate that the girls, that Salt and Pepper would be co-hosts. That the producers just felt like that would be too many people at the table. Like, it would just be too, too, um, I know what I'm talking about, bunched up, too busy at the table. So, they were like, the compromise was salt and pepper would do the talk, the table. You know, they would do the hot topics and the gossip or whatever and promote the show. But when it was time for the performance, Spinderella would do the performance piece of it. That was the compromise. I saw the producer's point of view because when you saw all them women at the table when they showed the clip, it may not seem like a lot to add one more person, but I understand where they're coming from to say, okay, we already have our regular four co-hosts and we add two people. If you notice when they do those episodes, when they interview people and stuff, if you notice a lot of times they switch people out. Um, I know on The View, like I said, I look at The View. On The View, if they're interviewing somebody, you may not, it, very seldom is it all four women doing the interview. It's Whoopi and 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 Sunny or Megan and whatever, whatever. They switch it up. They don't have the same all of them there together. So Salt and Pepper had a conversation about it. And basically they were like, you know, I don't understand why she wouldn't want to come, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'll get to, I'll go deep into that in a minute. Cause I don't want to feel like I'm repeating myself, but they had a conversation about it. And of course they were like, why would, you know, why, you know, why she feel that way? Like, of course, you know, if the talk that one or the talk doesn't, you know what I mean? Like we can't tell them how to, how to run their show. And, you know, Pepper was kind of telling her the whole thing, how things went down with D, you know, with D Wiz or whatever. And, you know, Pepper was like, look, at this point in the game, we're here to we're here to promote the residency and whatever show that is going to invite us so we can talk about this residency and try to promote this residency, that's what we're going to do. And if they say, you know, that they don't want all three, then they don't want all three. Like, we got to respect that's they, that's their house. You know what I mean? We can't make them, you know, bring us. And Spin's thing is you could work, you could fight for me. But I feel like the compromise was the fight. Jimmy got them because they didn't want you at all. Jimmy got them to invite you to do the performance piece of it. You're the DJ. So I'm going to get back to that. So Spin met up with G Wiz. And basically he said the same thing. He was like, look, I'm not really understanding the hostility toward me. I'm really not understanding why you're mad at me. And she was like, I'm not mad at you. You know, I'm just kind of just the whole situation. And, and again, I feel like Spin, you're losing your argument. You're losing your argument because this man is saying, look, I got love for you. I came to you. I'm not really understanding why your attitude is towards me. I don't have nothing to do with this. I'm working just like I'm not even working with Salt and Pepper at this point. I'm working for the casino. I'm working in Vegas and I'm doing my job. And you're mad at me. She's like, well, no, I'm not. Because oh, the other thing that came up was 
she kind of came at him and was like, when you you make sure it's always salt, pepper, and spinderella. Salt, pepper, and spinderella. He was like, okay. Like, I said that. I said salt, pepper, and spinderella. She was like, well, I just want to make sure that you know that. I just want to make sure you know that. And he was like, why are you coming at me like that? And I feel like, and again, I can't walk a mile in her shoes and understand how long this has been going on, how deep it's been going on. I can only go by what I'm seeing at this point. So they had that little talk and she, so they, they were sort of coming to a little ahead. And then she says, well, if it happened again, would you do it again? Would you, would you work for Salt Pepper again if the same thing happened and they offered you the job? And he was like, probably. And she said, see, see, that's what I mean. You know, I felt like we were getting somewhere, but if he said he would still take the job, then it seemed to me like we right back where we started. Then I don't know what you want from people. So then she meets with Jimmy. Her residency has is lagging because Caesars wants to do the residency, but they want to connect it to Salt and Pepper. It's, now on this one, I guess I'm 100 with Spin. I understand what she's coming from. Like, look, I'm a DJ in my own right. I don't. This is something I'm trying to do separately, and I'm I'm a DJ in my own right. Like people know me as a DJ. I don't need to do everything connected to Salt and Pepper in order for this to be successful. And Jimmy is making it seem like the reason why the residency for her has been held up is because they're trying to figure out a way to connect salt and pepper to it. So I understand her frustration with that. So then Jimmy said, you know what? I really feel like it's more going on here and this is really getting deep. Let us all sit down so we can clear the air and say what needs to be said. Like, let's just get it done. He told her about the talk situation and how they did invite her to do the music, but not sit at the table. And she was like, well, if I can't sit at the table, I'm not going. So the three of them sit down. All right, here's where I'm going to get into the bulk of it because I didn't want to just feel like I was just repeating myself. All right, here's what I didn't know. And again, there are two sides to every story. There's really three sides to every story, yours, mine, and the truth. So Spin's version of the story was things were really bad between her and the girls. And I don't know if she used the word fired, but basically they parted ways. Saul's version of the story is she chose to leave and then four years later she asked to come back and when she asked to come back we welcomed her back with open arms there were no hard feelings there was no grudges but at the end of the day those four years that she was gone we kept touring and yes we did bring on um G Wiz as our DJ but it was never to replace her it was because we had to keep working we were going to keep working and you know Saul's other part of it is when we were already a group and already a brand before she came on board. It was never equal because she wasn't there from the beginning. We And we know that. Well, if you know the history of Salt and Pepper, you know that. She was like, so she keeps waiting. She says, so it, it, it seems like she wants something that's never going to happen. She wants this to be an equal partnership. And it's never going to be an equal partnership because it never was an equal partnership. We were never partners. It was always, we're hiring you to be our DJ. Now, 99.9% .9 of any other hip-hop group has never included their DJ on the level that we've included Spinderella. And I'm going to be honest with you, to a certain extent, she is absolutely correct. You think about a lot of, you might know their DJ's names, um, and you may see their DJ. Like, the only other group I can really think of are the groups where it's like DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince or Eric B and Rakim. A lot of people for a long time thought Eric B was the rapper. They didn't know Eric B was the DJ because his name came first. But when you think of groups, like I said, Kid and Play, um, I remember for a long time, LL Cool J, we knew his DJ. But then when LL Cool J, you ain't seen his DJ for years. You know what I mean? So you, it's definitely valid to say we've done more for Salt, for Spinderella than a lot of other groups have done for their DJs. No disrespect. Then they brought up the point about when they signed their big record deal, which I'd always heard Spinderella's side of the story. When they signed their big record deal, they got $3 million each. They were The money did not include Spin. They took part of their own money and gave Spin a million dollars. I think that she ended up getting like a, a $1.3 million. They took that out of their own money to, so that Spin could get something because the, the deal did not include Spin at all. Now, I'd always heard that they didn't get Spin nothing. And um, Salt was like, yeah, that's the story she tells, but that's not true. We gave her money out of our own pocket that we weren't obligated to give her. 
So now that I'm getting both sides, and like I said, I remember they did that reality show way back in the day, but I don't remember all the damn details from the reality show. I just remember that this was this ain't new, that this was the issue back then. And Salt was like, I don't lose no sleep over the past. Like, I don't lose any sleep over how Spin feels like we treated her in the past. She said, I don't like the tension of where we are now. I don't like feeling like I got to walk on eggshells and everything I say or do is going to be scrutinized or she's going to feel like it's a personal attack. And it does really feel that way sometimes, Spin. It feels like no matter what they do, they can't, they just, they can't win. And the situation with the talk came up and Spin was like, well, if I can't, Sit at the couch, then I'm not going. So she didn't go to the talk. And they brought up another valid point. Salt was like, Spender said, Spinderella feels like she's getting lost in with this new generation. People don't know who she is. They know Salt and Pepper, but they don't know Spinderella. She said, but then you turn, you you miss an opportunity to be on national TV on a show that gets two, min, two million viewers a day to not be seen. It's almost like a contradiction to say, well, you want this, you want this respect, you want this, you want that. But when the opportunity presents itself, you don't take it because it's not exactly the way you want it to look or it's not presented the exact the exact way you want it to be. And I'll be honest with y'all, after looking at this episode, I really have a different point of view. Now, I'm not saying Spinderella doesn't have valid points. I'm not saying that. She does. But I think what is most what was most eye-opening to me was when what Salt said about she wants this to be an equal partnership and it's never going to be that because that's not how it started. We hired her. And that is 100% true. That is 100% true because I told y'all in the first couple of episodes or whatever, I remember the first time I saw Salt and Pepper was with the original DJ Spinderella. And then they came back through DC and it was... They introduced this Spinderella and they was talking mad shit about the old Spinderella. So I remember that happening. So you weren't there from the beginning. And there were, you know, people think stuff is an overnight sensation, but it's not. It was a lot that happened before they became salt and pepper. And like she said, we had hit records before she got there. And I know they had hit records because, hell, like I said, I saw them before Spin was a part of the group. So... Y'all, it, this was a pretty good episode to get a little bit of insight. And now you sort of see how we kind of got to where we are now where she's no longer with the group because I don't know where they go from here because Finn has a chip on her shoulder and I don't know if there's anything that Salt and Pepper can do to wipe it away. And at this point, I don't know if they want to anymore because I think they're tired of trying. So I'm sure it'll be interesting to see what y'all got to say in them comments. Drop it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Peace.